Yeah. All right, so I think everybody here knows me. Um, thank you all for coming. My name is Lisa Kittleman. I'm partners of the Kittleman, the Kittleman Group. We're one of the top five Kelly Williams teams in the entire Maryland, D.C. region. And almost 100% of our business comes from past clients, referrals, like Colt and Margarita over here, my past clients, um, and word of mouth and our reputation in the community. So thank you everyone for joining us. This is Jordan. She's one of the preferred lenders that, that we work with. And you guys know we only work with the best, so I'll let her introduce herself. Hi, so I'm Jordan. I'm with the Curly team of First Home Mortgage. We serve Maryland, D.C., Virginia, but a lot of our business is primarily here in Howard County. Um, and so, yeah, that's pretty much it. Awesome. Excited for her to be here and to check with you guys today. So congratulations, buying a house is extremely stressful. I'm glad you guys are here to kind of talk through everything. The whole point of this is to give you like a bird's eye view of the process, what to expect, what comes next, what questions to ask. If you guys do have any specific questions, please let me know. You guys can let me know now. I just wanna make sure that I hit them. Um, and then if you do think of any in the way, please like let me know. This is definitely not a strict talk. We're gonna be talking to you guys, answering your questions. We want you to leave here with you know all your questions answered. All right, so we're gonna cover fears and facts about buying a home. We talk to buyers all the time and we have kind of their common fears. So we're going to address those with you now. Realities of our market today. As you guys know, the market started to shift down at the end of last year. In the last 10 days, that has changed dramatically. Um, interest rates, as Jordan can tell you, uh, went down quite a bit, which is allowing buyers to have more purchasing power. They're able to pay more for their houses. We're seeing multiple offers again. We're seeing waiving contingencies again. So we'll talk to you guys about what that means. Um, the 10 simple, simple steps to home ownership. That's why you hired Jordan and I to make it as simple as possible. And then your next steps. So everyone thinks that they can't afford to buy a house right now or they um, don't have enough money to put down. That's not necessarily the case. There are a lot of programs out there. Um, and for conventional financing, Jordan can talk about the down payments. A lot of people think you need 20%. That's not the case. So we'll talk about that. Um, I have to wait until the market gets better. There's truly never a bad time to buy. I mean, right now, interest rates, a lot of our clients are locking in below 6% which in the grand scheme of things is a very, very strong interest rate, especially compared to when they were like high sevens mm -hmm. just a few months ago. All right, let's see. Um, all right, interest rates, we talked about that. They're generally between six and seven. We have in the last week, we've had two clients lock in below six, which is huge, um, massive. <laughs> it makes a huge difference in your mortgage payment. Another benefit for buying a house, you get your equity build up, value appreciation. If you look at when somebody purchased in 2019 to what they're selling for now, it is consistently like 100,000 plus more. So I mean, what other investment? I mean, of course you're timing the market, right? But in a few years, A, you live in your own home, you could paint it whatever color you want, you could have pets, you could do whatever you want, have horses, like <laughs> cool. Um, and you were able to make such a massive investment. That is huge. Real estate's never gonna go to zero, right? Even if the market crashes, just wait it out. Wait it out, it's always gonna come back up, especially in our area. So the investment aspect of it is massive. Um, pride of ownership, you get stability, security, a sense of community, freedom to do what you want. A lot of tax benefits come with owning a house. And of course, wealth building. The tax benefits are huge. Um, so if you do have questions on those, we're happy to address them. I do have a very good accountant too that I can connect you guys with for specific questions about the tax benefits. Um, now, with that said, buying a house is great, but there are some reasons not to buy. Katie can tell you I've talked buyers out of purchasing before because it just wasn't in their best interest. With our team, we're always gonna put you guys first. So yes, you know, I love when people choose to buy, but you making the right decision for you and your family is the most important thing. So changing jobs, like job security, you're not sure where you're gonna be. Maybe, you know, you're not happy where you are and you wanna take a few years off. Maybe that, you know, maybe it's right to stay put for a little bit until you get some security around that. Um, financial, if your credit score isn't right, Jordan can kind of touch base on this. She works with a lot of clients where their credit isn't right and she puts them on a plan for six months, a year, two years to do that. Um, good investment. Do kind of want to touch base on 
Yeah, definitely. So the minimum credit score to qualify for a mortgage right now is going to be about 640, and then it's going to be 660 for some of the first-time homebuyer programs. But we always say it's never a no, it's always a how. So even if your credit score is not there when you get started, we always put a good plan in place, giving you those action items and steps you need to take in order to boost your credit score up. Higher credit score that you get, the more options that are available to you, and oftentimes you're able to secure a better term. So always, always good to be monitoring the credit early. I love that. Um, house poor, we do not want you guys to buy a too expensive home and have all of your assets stuck in your house. It's going to cause a lot of stress for you. So Jordan can kind of talk about different buckets that you want, you know, a bucket for travel, a bucket for savings, a bucket for your house, and making sure you're comfortable with how much you're paying for your house. If what you want in a house is too expensive, that's absolutely fine. Let's hold off and not do it right now and work on ways that you can save to make sure you have enough down payment. And then short-term ownership. I was just talking to a client actually on my way here, um, and she was she wants to sell her house. She's getting um, a new job closer to DC. She lives in Columbia now. But she was saying, Lisa, is it right to buy a house when this job is probably I'm only gonna be here for one to two years? And so I talked her through that. You know, maybe that doesn't make sense. It's really important to stay in a house for like three to seven years on average before you sell in order to recoup like the closing costs, build that equity. So if you're only thinking about staying for one to two years, maybe now's not the right time to buy or you rent, right? So you move and you, you decide to rent out your current house for a few years. We can talk about that too. Um, here are just 10 easy steps to homeownership. We're gonna touch base on all of them now. So step one, decide to buy. It's definitely a financial, it's a really important decision, but it's also a huge financial step to own your first home and a personal choice. Find your right agent. Hello, you found her. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my team. Um, that's huge. Number one, hiring an agent. And as a buyer's agent, it does not cost you any money, which is huge. So in Maryland, the seller pays both parts of commission. So when you buy a house, you don't have to pay commission. When you sell the house, you have to pay the buyer's agent commission and the listing agent commission. So when you buy a house, there's absolutely no reason for you not to have strong negotiation on your side. So very, very, very important. Um, as your buyer's agent, we'll educate you about the market. Like I said, we're one of the top agents here in Maryland, so we have a very strong pulse on the market. We'll let you know, you know, average sales price to list price, give you guys, before you make an offer, what to expect. So when you do make an offer, you're not completely overwhelmed with the process analyze your wants and needs. We only want to show you the best homes on the market. So we do a deep dive into what exactly you're looking for, why that's important to you, and make sure I'm only showing you the best homes on the market. The average home buyer, just as an FYI, sees between one to seven houses in person. <gasps> um, guide you to the homes that fit your criteria. As a real estate agent, we can't steer you into an area or block bust you away, but if you're telling me certain things are important to you, then I'm gonna ask you clarification questions to allow me to kind of steer you to where you know you would be happy. Coordinate the work of other professionals. Everything you can imagine with a house, cleaning, painting, handyman, contractors, roofers, window companies, anything you could ever imagine, we have people that either we've worked personally with or our clients have. So we'll connect you with everybody. Um, if their home needs repairs, we'll help you do those and everything to all of that and tell you you know how they adjust accordingly um, all, um jordan and i actually just went through an appraisal together where the appraiser didn't necessarily pull the correct comps for this house so jordan and i were able to talk to the appraiser and make the correct adjustments for it to come back we'll give you a really good pricing analysis negotiate on your behalf this is huge in this market is to have a really strong negotiator on your side that has a good relationship this market is really, really competitive. We were able to just get a buyer under contract, a home just hit the market for under list price, and we canceled, I think there were at least seven showings that day alone on this house. We were able to cancel it. The reason being Austin, a buyer's agent on our time, sucked up big time for the listing agent. The listing agent wanted to work with him, told him way more information than she ever should, um, and it worked in our client's advantage. So it's really important to have somebody that has those relationships that can um, negotiate on your behalf. And then solve any problems. It's real estate, Jordan knows, probably it's happened. It's a crazy industry. 
Um, that's why it's important to have someone with experience. So, you know, when problems arise, we never present you guys with problems, but we say, hey, here's the hiccup, here are a few solutions, which way do you want to go with it? And kind of guide you through that. And then, of course, be your advocate. We'll always put you guys first. All right, and then Jordan's gonna kind of talk about the pre-approval process. Perfect. Okay, so seven steps to financing your home. I don't know if Mr. Busy can do the things here. Um, we're actually gonna focus mainly today on the first four. So the first four where you're gonna do in the preparation phase before you even go under contract. Five through seven are actually done after you've submitted and gotten an offer accepted. So one through four, choose the right lender, establish your budget, submit the documentation for pre-approval, and uh, decide on your mortgage options. So we're gonna talk through a little bit of a deep dive into those four things. All right, so the first, and Lisa touched on this already, one of the most important things is gonna be establishing your budget. So when we as the lender look at qualifying you, we're gonna be looking at your income versus all of your monthly expenses that you're required to pay, right? So we're looking at you know, car payment, um, minimum credit card bills, student loans, things that you're required to pay. What that doesn't take into consideration is all the things that you love to do in life outside of the required payments, right? So if you like to travel, if you like to um, you know, donate to your church regularly, fund charities, whatever it may be, we don't look at those things in terms of qualifying. So why it's so important to look at your budget even before speaking with the lender is to make sure that you're communicating a monthly payment that's gonna be comfortable for you. A lot of people can qualify for a lot more than they are comfortable spending per month. So this is a super important piece to kind of dive into even before you start working with lenders. Um, so a good place to start is if you're renting and if you think that you can take on a slightly higher monthly payment then every single month, like let's say for example you pay $2,000 a month in rent, you know, and you think you can afford $2,400, then every single month as you make a rent payment, just apply $400 to your savings account and just see if you can, you know, still enjoy all the other things that you like to do month over month, okay? Choosing the right lender. So this is super important. A really good place to start is asking for referrals. So your agent is a really good resource like Lisa. Um, she's worked with many different lenders, so she's gonna be familiar with communication style, um, you know, what programs they have available and what's gonna be a really good fit for you. You can also ask friends and family. Um, super important that you're asking, you know, people that might be purchasing in a similar way that you are. So in other words, if you're a first time home buyer, you might not wanna be working with your friend's lender that only does investment properties, right? So really good place to start is asking for those referrals. Um, then you wanna interview each of them, right? Set up a phone call. Not every lender is created equal. Um, in terms of rates and, and programs and uh, closing costs, a lot of them are gonna be very comparable, but where they're different, right? Not all of them are going to know how to um, advise you based on your personal goals, analyze your financial situation, and close on time without surprises. So it's super important that when you're vetting out your lender that you're choosing someone that you feel confident is gonna be able to deliver on those three points. Um, and then third, once you have chosen the lender, um, you're gonna go through the loan application, which I'll talk about in a little bit here, and get pre-approved. Okay, so I wanna definitely spend some time here. Getting pre-approved is like the number one thing you wanna do before you even set foot in an open house and start shopping. Pre-approval ensures you, your real estate agent, the seller, the listing agent, that you've been fully vetted, um, and that you're shopping in the right price range for your budget. So there's a big difference between getting pre-approved and getting pre-qualified. So those two terms get thrown around a lot during you know, this process. We actually don't even do pre-qualifications because they don't hold any weight as you get out there and start really wanting to make offers. Pre-qualification, we're just, you know, it's more of your stated income, stated assets, maybe stated credit score, and just a general guesstimate of what you might qualify for. A pre-approval is when you actually go through the steps, you submit paperwork, um, do full credit check, you're run through an automated underwriting system, you've been fully vetted. Um, so I'm gonna talk, I, again, I know I said lenders have different processes. Um, in terms of getting pre-approved on our end, we'd essentially set up a 15 to 30 minute phone consultation, um, go through the goals that you have for the purchase, and then I'd guide you to completing that pre-approval application online, which is super simple. Um, you click complete an online form, and then in those booklets that I have, it lists out the full documents that you might expect. I forget what page it's on, I can look. Um, but I always say to think of everything in twos. So two pay stubs, two bank statements, two years of your federal tax returns and W-2s, and then one photo ID, so almost all twos. <laughs> um, but once that's submitted, typically 
Um, it's about uh, 24 hours from the date that you submit the last documentation um, to when we're scheduling your loan consultation. And that's when we talk about your mortgage options, right? So um, in that loan consultation, we're talking about your purchase power, your personal purchase power, sales price, monthly payment, expected cash to close based on the loan programs that you qualify for. So there's no one size fits all. These are custom tailored to you and your goals and what you're looking to do. Um, I get a few kind of frequently asked questions regarding uh, pre-approvals. And um, first is, is there a cost to do this? No, there's no fee to getting pre-approved. <clears throat> We cover all the costs that you can expect during the loan consultation um, and when you actually part with that money. Um, so no cost for that. Um, uh, how, how, uh, how long is it good for? It's typically good for about 120 days. That's how long your credit report is good for. But part of our education that comes along in that process is how you can stay pre-approved even beyond that you know, 120 days and what you can expect. Um, another question we get a lot is how long does it take? So again, it's about 24 hours from the time that you submit that application to the time you get a response on what you can do. Um, and just because you do submit that application, it doesn't always mean that you can get pre-approved right away. And that is part of our service that we provide. Again, it's never a no, it's always a how. So if there are steps that you need to take financially to be in a better position to qualify to buy a home, then we go through that with you. Um, so it becomes a mortgage ready plan. Um, and we give you those action steps. Um, all right. Um, so wanted to touch on just kind of down payment and um, monthly payment are gonna be kind of the last things that we go through here um, related to the pre-approval. Um, so Lisa mentioned, you know, the days are gone where you're required to put 20% down. So for conventional financing as a first time home buyer, you can put as little as 3% down. So you don't need that big, you know, sizable down payment before you can get into a home, which is amazing. Um, if you can do three, three and a half percent down for FHA financing, um, and these funds can come from kind of a, a range of places, right? So that three percent can come from your own checking and savings. It can come from your own investments. It could come from a gift from a family member if you have relatives that are willing to assist you with the purchase. Um, and it can come from also down payment assistance programs, which is something um, if you're eligible, then that's what we discussed during the loan consultation. It is, um, there are programs in the state of Maryland that are very, very good and become, have become a lot easier to qualify for. Um, there are down payment assistance that range from three to 6% um, in the state of Maryland, which minimum down payment is 3%. So it could cover down payment plus some of those closing costs. Um, and there are also special incentive programs too. Right now, the state of Maryland has one called the Smart Buy Program. It will pay off between one and $50,000 of student loan debt at closing. So some really great programs out there. And that again, is all that will be discussed during the loan consultation. Okay, and then monthly payment. Again, this is the number one thing that you wanna think about before you, again, even speak with the lender, but these are kind of the big things that go in it. Um, so you have your principal, right? That's the amount that you borrow from the lender, the interest, the cost of providing that credit amount to you. Um, you have your taxes, right? This is charged to you by the jurisdiction that just in uh, based on your home's assessed value year over year. And then you also have your in insurance. I almost said interest again. Your insurance, um, which is a policy that you set up on your home, hazard insurance or homeowner's insurance. Um, and it protects the home in the event of damage, such as a fire, right? To, to, um, Re redo the any damage. Um, and then there's also um, potentially mortgage insurance, depending on the type of loan that you're in. Mortgage insurance is actually protection for the lender in the event that you default on the loan. So there's always mortgage insurance with less than 20% down, but does allow you to keep a, you know, a very, um, your cash to close way, way down um, for a small fee. Okay, any questions? Okay. Cool. Well, I will turn it then once you're pre-approved. We turn everything back over to Lisa. Okay. Oh, quick question. Yep. With the mortgage insurance, if you end up paying enough principal that it's over 20%, do you have to? You can stop paying the mortgage insurance. That's correct. Yep. So after you reach 22% equity in your home, it'll fall off automatically, but you can request for it to be removed once you hit 20% equity in the home. And a lot of times, you know, depending on where the market is, you might be able to refinance it off sooner. Yep. So, yep. So once we got, you get that pre-approval letter, we turn everything back over to Lisa and she starts 
the, the biggest part about the pre-approval is you can't submit any offers unless you have a pre-approval. Because when you submit an offer, the listing agent is going to reach out to Jordan and say, did you verify their W-2s? Did you pull their credit? Did you review their assets to make sure you know, that you're a safe buyer? Which is also important why you need to have a local lender because if you have a lender based in California and they can't get a hold or they don't have a cell phone, that makes you as a buyer look weaker. And many times you have to pay more to make up for the risk of the loan officer. So having a local lender really, really, really works in your favor. Okay, so once you have the pre-approval, then you'll get back together with me and we'll do a deep dive into exactly what you're looking for. So what do you want your home to be close to? Where do you work? What, you know, what commute time do you want? What's important to you about the community? Our sidewalks, privacy, lot size, everything like that we'll do a deep dive into. How much space do you need? What's important to you in a home? Like some clients want a huge kitchen that's open because they have kids and they want to keep an eye on. Other people like to entertain. They like to have a kitchen closed off. So when they make a mess cooking and they're entertaining, they don't have to worry about doing dishes and cleaning up and things like that. So we'll talk to you guys about exactly what's important to you so we can um, clarify that in the search. Let's see, what features do you need? What amenities do you want? If cooking with natural gas is important to you, then we'll make sure that that's available in the community. Um, well and septic, if you, you know, prefer private, if you wanna be on public, we'll kind of talk to you about the different neighborhoods that have that. Fixer upper, do you wanna put sweat equity in it or do you not have any time like me? And <laughs> you're never gonna do it. Uh, we'll talk about that too. All right, condo or townhome. There's a lot of pluses and minuses to living in a condo or townhouse. The pros, normally they're a lower cost, so you have that lower cost per square foot. No yard work or home maintenance. So a lot of people that are travel a lot for work prefer a condo or a townhouse because the community aspect of it, the lot is taken care of and we don't have to worry about mowing. Um, one thing to know with a, with a condo is you own the interior wall, walls. So many times with a condo, the roof, the outside siding, everything like that is maintained by the condo association. So it's less work for you. Of course you pay it in the condo fees. Nothing in life is free. Um, condo and towns also have amenities like swimming pools, playgrounds, parks, things like that. Um, the cons, of course, shared ownership, um, noise. A lot of people complain about sharing walls. You'll hear your neighbors. Managed by a board of directors. They said that can be good and bad. Yeah, we were just talking about that. <laughs> exactly. Um, new construction. Uh, there's a lot of new construction going on. Now, I will say one of the issues in our specific market is that new construction has slowed down. So because there's not a lot of new construction, because the prices of everything have gone up, that's caused a really tight hold on the inventory right now. And that's why you're seeing that resales are more expensive because the new construction can't maintain the influx of buyers in our area. Of course, for new construction, there's new, there's warranties, um, you can pick your lot, features, design. A lot of lots will have like a lot premium, for example. So if you go to a lot and you want a more private lot, you may have to pay 25, 50,000 more. I will say that builders are negotiating a lot more with agents. Like one of my clients that just did new construction, we were able to get their lot premium waived. So a lot of people think that you can't work with an agent on new construction. Buyer, builders want you to think that. <laughs> so they can take advantage of you. That's not the case. Definitely get representation if you want new construction. Um, now, the issue with new construction, that price that, that you see for new construction, that is not the finished price. You need to add about like five to 10% of that because when you go to the design center, I can guarantee that you're gonna spend money on cabinet upgrades, bathroom upgrades, countertops, things like that. So don't be fooled by the base, that's like the base price. You add your lot premium on top of that, you add finishes on top of that. If you want a finished basement, that goes on top of it. So we can talk more about that. And then no firm closing date, you know, of course, things happen. Although with this warm winter, they're not um, and, like having any frost delays or anything like that, so the benefits. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, finding your house. Um, when you are starting to ready, we're gonna set you up with our buyer instant notification system. This is gonna be way more updated than Zillow, Truly, or Realtor.com. It comes directly from our agent database. As soon as a home comes coming soon, you'll get it. It'll allow you to heart the homes you love, trash the homes you hate, and provide feedback to me and my team. So if you don't like something about a home, if you love something, the more feedback to us, the better. So we get a really good sense of what you're looking for. And then we, from there, we'll decide. So I probably saw or have seen a lot of the homes that you're interested in because the inventory is not very high and I see probably close to like 200, 
homes a month, which is crazy. Um, so if you're interested in a home, I've probably seen it. I'm gonna tell you, no, Marilyn, this, this kitchen is completely closed off. It's not what you want, it's open. What I don't want is for me to show you a house and you walk in and you say, Lisa, I, I told you I, I want an open kitchen. This is completely closed off. I value your time, I respect your time. We only wanna show you homes that match your criteria. Once you find a home you like, you'll decide to make an offer. From there, we'll do a full market analysis. And then we'll also send you the disclosures, which will have all the information about the home. So, you know, we'll try to find out the age of the roof, the age of the HVAC, hot water heater, the siding, things like that, the major mechanics of the home. And then we'll review your pricing analysis with you. Now, what you see, what your job is when you see a house is, of course, does it have the right um, style for your home? Does it fit your family? Um, location so a lot of times I will recommend that buyers drive drive like to and from their work at the times that they work so if you work early in the morning you might want to make that commute from the house to your work to see how it looks um, if community is really important to you maybe you want to drive by the home at night or when school lets out and kind of see you know who's getting on and off the school bus things like that what we are looking for are red flags, right? So you go in, you guys can see if it fits your family. We go in, we're looking for all the red flags, right? So we're gonna like point out the bad parts of the house. If we see water damage, if we think it's overpriced, how does it compare to other homes in the neighborhood? We do a deep dive. Will the location hold its value? So if you're thinking about renting, I mean, real estate's a huge investment. We always wanna think long-term things change, is it a good value for renting? Is it a good renting community? We'll kind of tell you guys all of that. And then you make an offer. So what you'll need is your earnest money amount. So your EMD is an earnest money. It's generally one to 3% of the purchase price. And it's an initial deposit you put down on the home. So it's not an additional deposit, it's your initial deposit. What this shows the seller is that you're an earnest and serious buyer. The higher the earnest money, the stronger your offer looks because one, it shows that you have the money right now to put down. You're not waiting for you know your pay stubs to come in. Um, number two, you're gonna comply with all of your contingencies. Your earnest money is protected inside of your contingencies. So you'll have a home inspection contingency, a financing contingency, which we'll talk about. With your EMD, if you have five days to do your home inspection and it's day six, and you call me and you're like, Lisa, I had a terrible dream that the house is gonna fall over. I'm not buying it, I wanna cancel on the home inspection. Your earnest money is now at risk because you're past your five day contingency period. Does that make sense? So your earnest money is protected if you're inside of your contingencies. If you're outside, it's at risk. Um, once you go under contract, you'll submit that earnest money deposit to a title company that you choose. Title companies in Maryland are a third party company. They don't represent the seller, they don't represent the buyer, but in the state of Maryland, the buyers can choose the title company. So you guys can choose whatever title company you want. Um, some, like I think New Jersey does title attorneys. We don't do that, we do title companies here in Maryland. Um, your earnest money will go into your title company. They'll cash that check or you'll wire it. They'll hold it all the way up to closing. At closing, your earnest money will go towards your final closing amount. All right, then you'll need your preferred title company, of course, because we're gonna need to say who's holding that thousands of dollars, and then you'll need your pre-approval letter. With the offer terms, here are just some like generic offer terms. We'll need to talk purchase price, closing date. So if you're getting a loan, typically it's like 30 days, give and take. Sometimes Jordan can close sooner, sometimes you may wanna close later depending, but your closing time frame is about 30 days from when you go under contract. So we'll need to put a closing date, any contingencies, like your inspection contingencies, your financing contingencies, all the inspections are happening after you go under contract and all inspections are paid for by you, the buyer. So generally speaking, you'll want a structural mechanical inspection, which is gonna be about $600. Then you'll want a radon inspection, which is gonna be about 160. And you'll want a wood destroying insect inspection, which is gonna be about $95. Those are like the three no-brainer inspections. On top of that, if you have a chimney, definitely do a chimney inspection. Those are incredibly expensive. I think, yeah, I was gonna say, I think you guys actually. Yeah. Um, very, very expensive. We just had a client um, that's purchasing in Howard County. They didn't wanna do a chimney inspection. They're like, we're not gonna use it. I'm like, look, when you go to sell it, if those buyers wanna use it, they're gonna do a chimney inspection. And if you don't know the cost of it, it's gonna be huge. Did the chimney inspection needed eight thousand dollars worth of work so thank goodness they did a chimney inspection because we were able to negotiate half 
So that just saved them $4,000 that they would have paid in the future because our team was like, do it right now. You're gonna regret it. <laughs> um, so those are your inspections. If you're on well and septic, you'll need a well yield inspection, which the minimum is one gallon per minute. You'll need a camera septic inspection. Don't do visual, do camera. And then you'll need your water quality to make sure that you're not drinking coliform. <laughs> From the farm, yeah. All right, now keep in mind your home inspections. Do I have this on the next page? Okay. Oh, yeah, I do. All right. Um, then you'll need seller contribution if you want any. So, seller contribution is money that the seller gives you towards your closing costs. So, normally the max seller contribution you can receive is 3% based on how much you put down. I think if you put more than 20, you can receive less? More than 10. So more than 10. Okay. More than 10. Um, so Jen, if you put down less than 10%, the max seller contribution you can receive is 3%. So this is like cash the sellers give to you at closing to go towards your closing costs. Now, keep in mind the net is the most important to the seller. So if you do seller contribution, generally your purchase price is a little bit higher to make up for that. Your escalation terms. So in this market, we are seeing escalations now. What escalations mean is if there are confirmed multiple offers, you may want to think about submitting an escalation clause. What that means is you'll beat any offer by say whatever amount you want, but let's say $3,000 up to your max of say 400,000. So if another offer comes in at 383, then you would go 3,000 above that 386 and you would cap there. If another offer is at 405, you would go all the way up to your max of 400, you wouldn't go above that. Now, they do have to show you the other offer that put in your escalation. So you are protected. You do have to see the other offer. But escalation terms are great for buyers because instead of going up to your max, you can go in increments, right? So you don't just outbid right off the gate. You kind of outbid by just a little bit. And then post-settlement agreement. If the seller is, for example, building a new construction house and they want the equity out of their current house, they may want to close and then live in the house for 30 or 60 days after. So typically the buyers, the sellers will pay your new principal interest taxes insurance. So your new mortgage payment, the sellers will pay that. Does that make sense on a post settlement agreement? It can be kind of tricky, but you close and then the sellers can live in the house still for 30 or 60 days after. All right, you submit a subject contract to your lender. So Jordan can kind of pick up here on what that looks like. Yeah, so basically once you're under contract, negotiating the deals, secure the terms, I'm gonna copy the contract. My team and I will go through everything, get everything set up, and we talk about locking in your interest rates. You're actually not able to lock in your interest rate until you have a fully accepted offer and we have that signed contract in hand. Um, so we'll talk a couple of options based on the loan program that you chose um, during that loan consultation. So we'll also go ahead and get the appraisal order. So the appraisal determines the value of the home that you're buying. So if you're purchasing something for 500,000, right, it's that check and balance to make sure it's not only worth 475. Um, they're also looking for any major safety items during that appraisal. So if there are things that make it you know, not livable at that time, right? they're gonna re require that it's completed before you can secure the financing. So we'll also get you linked up with one of our processors. We get any updated documents um, and get your file ready to submit to the underwriter for the loan approval. Perfect. And the appraisal, unless you have an appraisal waiver, which in this wacky market you may, but the appraisal really only works in the buyer's favor. So if you're under contract at 400 and the appraisal comes in at 395, then it opens up negotiations because your loan amount is going to be based on the appraised value. So we'll negotiate with the seller, have them hopefully to come down to the appraised value. If you're under contract for, for, for 400 and the appraisal comes in at 410, you can call me and say, oh my God, I was so ready to go with you. My appraisal came in higher. Yeah. Um, you're locked in. The seller will not get a copy of the appraisal report. You paid for it. It's your personal information only. None of the terms of the contract change. You just are very excited that you got a great price on the home. Now, keep in mind, the appraiser sees a copy of the contract, right? So they know what price it needs to come in at. So generally, if they're not being difficult, the appraisal will come in close to list price. But sometimes we're able to make it come in more, which is amazing. All right, then you do your home. For the home inspection, it's major items only. So when we're walking through a home, we're looking at that cosmetic stuff. If it needs paint, if the toilets are old, if the tile is chipped, things like that, we negotiate at the forefront, right? So that's part of your like purchase price, seller contribution offer. The home inspection is for things we can't see and major safety items only. So if there's issues with the foundation, if there's water issues, if the windows don't work, if 
there's electrical issues, anything like that, like latent defects that we can't <clears throat> see, that's when you're able to negotiate with the seller. So you can ask the sellers to repair these items or you can ask the sellers for a credit for these items. So we'll do that once we get to the inspection. Um, we talked about the appraisal and title. Typically the appraisal comes after the home inspection. So Jordan will talk with me and say, okay, Lisa, are we good to go on the inspection? If we say yes, we're moving forward, then you'll go ahead and pay for the appraisal. The reason being, we don't want you to pay more money for an appraisal if the home inspection is gonna turn up you know, major structural damage. So we kind of try to save you money throughout the process as much as we can. And then title, that's when your title company is going to check everything, make sure you have legal rights to the home, um, make sure that the people selling it are actually able to sell it to you and you get the deed and title free and clear. Um, title insurance is optional in Maryland. Lenders, the title insurance is mandatory, but owner's title insurance is optional. It's a one-time fee collected at closing. And then you obtain funding. When Jordan gives you all the money. Yeah, so funding actually happens the day of settlement, um, but you get your loan approval much before that. And so, right, we've collected all the documentation. Everything's been reviewed by the underwriter who ultimately approves or denies the loan. But uh, they were, they're reviewing not only your financials, but they're also reviewing the appraisal, the insurance, the, the title work. Make sure that everything, all the boxes are checked and you're good to go. We issue that, that, um, that was a pre approval letter again, <laughs> that uh, final approval. Um, and give you the clear to close. Um, and from there, your last step in the process is just to wire your funds to the title company and we're wiring your mortgage, your loan amount to the title company as well. That's where all of the closing happens. So, so you take a big part. deep breath and you part ways. <laughs> You're making a good investment. And then you close. For buyers, you do have to sign the day of closing. So for sellers, sometimes they'll sign early. For buyers, you have to sign on the day of closing. At closing, unless you have a post-settlement, you will get keys at the closing date. So you can start moving in as soon as you're done signing papers. Now, one thing to note, the home maintains the seller's responsibility all the way up through your closing. So we always wanna do a walkthrough the day of closing or the day before to make sure nothing changed in the house. There's no new leaks, a tree didn't fall in the house, you know, all of that stuff because it's the seller's responsibility up to that. Like we just did one last week at the walkthrough and found out the washing machine was broken. So thank goodness we were testing all of that because the sellers had to buy a new washing machine for the clients. So that's why you need to do a walkthrough and check everything. All right, so budget wise, um, for closing costs, generally it's the total estimate, but generally speaking, closing costs, you're around three to 4% of the purchase price. This is just giving you guys a really good budget of how much money you would need to close. Three to 4% of the purchase price your earnest money, this is not in addition to, remember, your earnest money goes towards your closing costs, but earnest money up front is about one to 3% of the purchase price. Your inspections are about 400 to 1200, just depending on how many inspections you do, the size of your house, what company you use. We do have inspection companies, of course, that we can recommend to you. As the buyers though, you're the boss. So you choose what inspection company you use, title company, lender, Everything's your choice. We can give you recommendations. Um, if you do want a survey, that's generally between 600 and 2,500. 2,500 is when they, if they want, if you want them to stake the lot, that's a lot more expensive. Um, the general survey is a little bit less. Miscellaneous fees, you're going to ask for a one year normally, so six months to one year of your homeowner's insurance, and then of course you want to have reserves. I swear it's the craziest things. Like homes know when their owner changes and they like to act funky. It's like this weird thing. So of course, you know, hiccups can come. The inspection is only a snapshot of what the house is doing right now. It's not a guarantee of what's gonna happen in the future. So you definitely want some reserves because crazy things happen. All right, and then as closing day approaches, Jordan can kind of talk through this a little bit as, you know, what happens. Yeah, absolutely. Leading up to closing. Yeah, so and actually in the week before closing, we actually send you kind of this full breakdown email of all the things that you can expect. So you don't want to change anything. And this is something that we we preach from the very first time that we start. You don't want to have your credit pulled by, you know, you don't want to open up any new debt. So don't buy a car, don't buy a boat, don't finance furniture. Don't open up any any, credit cards. Yes, yeah. none of that. So don't have your, you know, have your credit pulled, anything like that. Don't move around finances, right? You want to make sure that, you know, it has to be verified in order to get your loan approval, but you don't wanna be transferring anything, making large deposits. We always have to keep a paper trail of 
you know, where that money's coming from for closing. So if you're, you know, transferring all this money in and out of your accounts, putting in cash deposits, um, it makes it that much harder for an underwriter to verify and they won't, um, won't approve cash deposits. So in other words, let's just say you needed $50,000 to close on your house and you say, okay, my bank account has 55,000 in it, but you have a $6,000 cash deposit. An underwriter is going to toss that out and say, hey, we're short funds to close. So it's super important that, you know, we're verifying bank statements. So you're not having a ton of activity in there. Um, what else? What else? What else? And you will, yeah. right? Like verify employment. You'll pull yes. your credit. <clears throat> um, you're, closing. Right before closing, there is, you know, we're monitoring the credit. So if you do have your credit pulled by anyone from the time you go under the contract to the time you close, um, that will pop up on our radar and we'll have to figure out if you open a new debt. So that kind of reiterates that. And then you, your employment does get verified just prior to closing. So we do a full verification right when you go under contract, but just a couple of days prior to closing, they're gonna call your employer and make sure you're still employed. So um, stay at your same job, you know, you don't wanna make any movements like that. Um, and those are kind of the big ones, I think. Hey, how um, are you? Communication is super important within that first, that week leading up, just for any last minute items, just preparing you for that closing day, making sure that there's you know, there's typically a pre-funding audit that happens so if anything comes up in that we want to make sure we're able to reach you um, and get what's needed so you guys can close on time and enjoy the day and then generally Jordan will, will review all numbers with you at least three days prior to closing so you mm -hmm. kind of know you can ask questions and you'll say it on you'll get a final closing disclosure so right when you go under contract you'll have a loan estimate that's you know estimated monthly payment estimated cash to close and then that closing disclosure will come out to you. Um, we'll review it together, and that way you'll know exactly monthly payment, exactly how much you're going to need at closing. All right, and then to closing, you'll need to bring your certified funds, or you can wire the funds for closing, and then a valid photo ID. Some title companies ask for two, so a valid driver's license or passport is perfect, and then like a credit card with your name on it is perfect. And then you'll receive your closing statement, your transfer of the clean title. If you do pay for title insurance, you'll receive a copy of your title insurance. And then you'll receive the keys to your new home, which is very exciting. And then you move in, of course, you wanna protect it. So we'll help you guys if you do need, again, contractors or HVAC you know, contractors, more than happy to provide you with everything to get the general maintenance of the home. Watch for signs of leaks, damage wear, I swear homes know things. <laughs> they know when you change. Um, keep a file of receipts and then warranty. If you do want to purchase a one-year home warranty, generally speaking, it's better to do it inside of the transaction. The reason being home warranty companies think that that's typical to buy it inside of a transaction. If you buy outside of a transaction, they think you're only buying it because you have a problem, <laughs> which most people do, um, and then they'll try to fight it. So if you do want a home warranty, it's much better to buy it inside of that real estate transaction. You'll get better protection for it. And you'll get a discount too, which is important. Cool. All right. Do you guys have any questions? I know that was like a fire hydrant of information. <laughs> if you don't have any specific questions, you have my cell phone number, my email address. I'm available all the time. Ask my husband. Ask Skylar. <laughs> um, no, truly though, like if you do have questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. That's what we do every single day. So.